Hi, I'm Kalyani Martilkat and I'm a trainer here at BenQ Middle East. Here in front of me, I have the RM03 series and I'll be taking you through how you can effectively use this panel and its features in a classroom scenario as a teacher. Today, we'll be focusing on the whiteboard. As a teacher, one of the mo most important features you use in a classroom is a whiteboard. So let me show you the whiteboard that we have over here. Here are the two different ways from where you can open up the whiteboard. So you have the icon over here right in the middle in the home screen or you can simply press the sidebar over here and you see easy right? You simply press it. Once you open the whiteboard you can see a range of different options over here. Each of them are split into three different groups and I'll be taking you through each and every one of them. So let's start with the middle group that we have over here. You can either use the pen that comes with the board or you can simply use your fingers. I personally like using my fingers. So you have the pen option over here. So you can select the color that you want. If you want more colors, you can simply press the X over here. And we have the entire pinwheel of colors. So we have a range of different options to choose from. Simply press save and here you have the color. You can change the thickness of the pen by pressing over here. And there you have it. You have the pen option over here. Apart from that, we even have a highlighter option, which I'll show you a little later into the video. And we have the dual pen option. So as you can see, we have the same color options over here. You can ask two students to come up on the board. Each of them can choose whichever color they want and they can come ahead and write on the board at the same time. So that's the pen option. We then have the eraser tool. So when I press the eraser over here, I get three more options. The first one is a finger eraser. So you simply run your finger on the letter or the word and it disappears. The next one is a strike down eraser. So you just strike the letter that you want gone and it works as an eraser. And the last one is the clear all or the usual original way of erasing whiteboards. Simply press clear and here you have a blank screen. Right? So let's look at the next option which is a text box. So very similar to Word or Excel or PowerPoint, this works as a text, uh, text bar as well. So let me just write down a sentence. And when I'm done, I'll simply press OK. And I get a multitude of options to edit the text that I've just saved over here. So I'm going to press this particular option on the left and right to increase the space. I will probably change the size, I'll change the color as well and over here I can decide if I want it to be bold, italics or underlined. More so I can even change the alignment of the, of the text. So if I press this, it's a right hand, uh, it's a, it's a right hand alignment. You can lock it, you can delete it and over here you can even duplicate or hyperlink it. So hyperlinking, when does that come in useful? is if you want to put in any YouTube links or any other links, you can simply press that over here. And when you're done, you can press confirm. So that is the text option. Over here, we have the selection tool. So once I press this, I can move this around anywhere on the screen. Moreover, it even works as a handwriting or a shape recognition. So let's see how that works. I am going to go ahead and choose a color and I'm going to write a word over here. So I've written hello over here. I'll choose a selection tool. I'll circle around it and I'll simply press the easy option over here. So now this changes to hello. So I'll just elongate it and here we have it converted to text. So very useful or uh, so you can ask students to come up on the board. They can write it freehand, select it and you have a perfect text conversion over here. So that's a selection tool. We then have a shapes and sticky notes option. Very, very similar to a laptop. You have sticky notes over here. You can change the color of course and maybe you can leave up your Wi-Fi password or if you have a student's birthday or any other important announcements, you can leave it up here for the entire class to see at all times. By simply pressing here, you can change the color you can change the size of the text, the alignment, the color, bold, italics, underline, hyperlinking, all the same things that you could do on the text box. 
We then have a shape option over here. So two options, you have 2D as well as 3D. So depending on what lesson you're teaching in class, you can select accordingly. So I'm going to go ahead and press a square over here. This is a 3D square. So of course I can increase, decrease the size of the square. I can even change the color of the, the sides of the square. So I'm going to go ahead and press pink or purple. Over here I can choose the width of the sides of the square. Moreover, I can lock it, delete it, same options, hyperlink, duplicate, delete, etc. Right. We then have the third option which is a templates option. Very, very useful for any teacher teaching any subject. So as you can see over here, we have a couple of sports backgrounds. So we have football, we have basketball, we have baseball. We also have treble notes for music teachers. And over here we have a four line book. So let me just delete the square over here. Okay. So in a classroom situation, when you're teaching a student how to write the alphabet, instead of writing it on sheets of paper, you can ask the student to come up on the screen, select whichever color they want, and they can directly write the alphabet on the screen. So this becomes very useful since you're writing for the entire class to see, if a student makes any mistakes, any rectifications, the teacher can make those mistakes or, uh, you know, change the mistakes for the entire class to see. So this way the class becomes a lot more effective than each student looking at their own piece of paper. Next up, there's a very exciting toolbox over here. So when you press this, you can see a range of mathematical and gamification tools. So let me, let's go through each one of them. We have a ruler over here, so a ruler comes up on the screen. You can just increase or decrease the size or the length of the scale or the ruler by simply moving to the left or right. You can change the angle by rotating over here and by simply taking a pen, you can run the pen towards the end of the scale, press X and here you have a perfect line. Next up, let's look at the protractor. So the protractor, of course, you can move it around. Here as well, you can change the angle. So I'm keeping it at 120 degrees. And I'm gonna go ahead and press this option to, to enhance the lines. This one for the, for the circle option. And here to color inside of the angle. When I'm done, I'll press X. And here I have 120 degree angle drawn right on the screen. Next up we have a compass. So similar to the protractor or the scale, you can change the angle over here and simply press the pen option over here to get a perfect circle. And lastly we even have the set square option. So I'm going to leave the set square up over here, press the pen and make a line through it. So as you can see over here with the mathematical tools, I have two line options, an angle option as well as a perfect circle. So again, when you do these things on the big screen using big tools instead of physical tools, it becomes very exciting for the students because this is something very new and it also makes the classes a lot more effective. Next up, we have a calculator. So, very exciting because it's a big calculator. You can write the equation, press an equal to, and you have the answer right on the screen. This, of course, you can move it and leave it on any end of the screen. So, as and when you're doing equations, you can just move the calculator to the side. So, now that we've covered all the mathematical tools, let's take a look at the gamification tools that they have over here. So, first up, we have the countdown option. So you can select exactly how long you want the countdown to run for. I'm going to leave it at three seconds. I'm going to press start, press this little window and over here I have the timer up. Very useful when you have maybe examinations or any speeches, you want to in, you know, ask students to come up on the board or come up to the screen and say any speeches. You can leave this timer up so you ensure that you don't run out of time. So that's the countdown option. We even have a stopwatch. 
So usually teachers use this when they've given tasks to certain students. They split the class into four or five groups, give each of them a task, and then as and when they start the task, they leave the stopwatch running up. This, of course, you can also leave up on the side by simply pressing the small window. We then have a scoreboard. So you can either split the group into two, minimum of two groups, or a maximum of eight groups. So let's try out four groups for now. I'm going to press start. And here I have the scoreboard. Now let me show you when this gets interesting. You can press this little window and that goes up over there. So as in when you're doing your sums or equations or questions over here, when a student gets a point, you can simply press this and you can increase a point. So most of the time, uh, in some of the other applications, the board, the scoreboard comes outside of the whiteboard. However, over here, it's actually a part of the whiteboard. So this ensures that as and when a student answers a question, at the same time, they can see them getting a point or just as controversially, you can take away points as well. Next up, we have a draw option. So let's take a scenario. As a teacher, I want three volunteers between the roll numbers, say one and 10. And I don't want to, you know, say any names. I don't want to select specific students. So I bring up the draw option. I'll press three students between roll number one and 10. I'll simply press start and I'll wait for the draws to come up. So first is roll number four, second is roll number two, and thirdly, I have roll number nine. So this ensures that there's a lot of mystery and excitement in the class, especially in the lower grades when you keep something like this up. Of course, this as well, you can leave up right in the corner. So each time that the roll starts moving, it gets the students all charged up. Lastly, we have the split screen. So here you can either split the screen into two or three. So today I'm going to go ahead and press three. I'll press start. And over here, the screen is now split into three. So let's say that I want the answer to three plus five. So I'm going to press this Q&A option over here. And I'm going to write my equation. Press paste to all and immediately I have three screens with the same content. I'll ask three students to come up on the screen. Each of them can choose a color of their liking and they can write the answer at the same time. So I'm going to write eight over here, choose another color and write eight over here. Also, I can write at the same time. So this ensures that it's extremely helpful when it comes to brainstorming activities or even when you just want students to come up on the board and write the equation. Best part is when you less press the X and you press don't save, you're back to the same screen. So if I was doing the equation for 3 plus 5, I call up three students, I close the board, I come back and I have the same equation on the screen. So as a teacher, let's say that you want to show your students any images, PowerPoints, PDFs, Word documents, anything. So here's how you would do that. You have the import option over here and three more pop-ups come on the screen. The first one is if you want to bring in an image, which is basically PNGs, JPEGs, and things like that. The next is a document, which is most Microsoft Office documents like PowerPoint, Excel, Word. And lastly, we have the IWB, which I'll explain later into the video. So today I'm going to press image and I'm going to choose my image from the USB. So I have a range of different options. I can choose from network drive, internal storage, etc. But today I'm choosing my USB. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up a picture of the map of the UAE. So here we have the map. Selecting the pen, I can make any annotations directly onto the image here. If I want to add more pages, I'll press X. Pressing this again, I will press maybe the document option. Press onboarding and I will press a uh, PPT on world, which has a couple of slides on Earth, the number of so the number of planets we have in the solar system, etc. I'm going to press OK, wait for it to load, and here I have my PPT. To see all the images, all the slides that I have, I'll simply press this option over here, and I can move up and move down, and I can navigate between all my slides. So this becomes very useful. Say. Um, 
especially when you're showing PPTs, PDFs or Word documents. On this side of the screen, we have some navigation and background options. So to just navigate, you can simply press the arrows on either side. To add a page, you can press the little X over here, the little plus over there. And to change the background, you can press the scroll option over here. You can either have a graph sheet, a ruled background or even a dotted background. So graph sheets are very, very useful for math teachers especially. So students can directly come on the screen and they can draw their graphs. To add pages, of course, there's a plus over here. To duplicate pages, you can press this. To add pages, you can press this. To delete, you can simply press the trash can over here. Once you're done with this, you have undo and redo options over here and even a zoom in or a zoom out option. So let me go to this page, press the navigation option over here. I can zoom in and I can move around with the rectangle option over here. This even works for zooming out. So with that, we are done with two sections of the whiteboard. Now let's come to the last section, which is the saving and recording option. So you have a simple recording tool over here. So it's a little circle with a square in it. When you press that, the recording gets started. So as you can see, I've been recording this session for quite a while now. When I'm done, I will simply press this over here and it asks me where I want to save it. So today I'm going to go ahead and save it to my USB. So I'll wait for that to get saved. So I've saved the, the entire session that we had today. Now let's say that I just want to go ahead and share it with the rest of the class. So I have three lines over here. When I press that, I get a few more options. So I have settings over here. I have exit over here. And here I have the sharing options. So I'm going to press this and I get six more options. There are six different ways as to how I can extract what's over here to your personal devices. So if you press share by QR code, you get an option of choosing how many pages you want to share. So I'm going to deselect and simply press two pages. I can either save it as share it as a PDF or I can say share it as separate images. So today I chose PDF. I'm going to press OK. And over here, I have a QR code on the screen. So your students can simply use, up, use their BYOD devices, scan it, and whatever was done here is now on their personal devices. The next option is sharing by email. You then have save as an image, as a PDF, save as IWB, or even save as EasyWrite. So if I save it as IWB, what happens is, tomorrow when I come back to the class, I can open up the document and start right where I'd left off. Over here we have settings as well. So we have some options over here. You can enable or disable the palm eraser by simply pressing the toggle over here. You can even change the handwriting recognition language. So you have a range of different languages, Arabic, English, Hindi, Turkish. If you press the X over here, you'll have a multitude of new options that you can choose from as well. When you're done, you simply press OK and you are back to the main screen. To leave or exit the screen, you simply press the door option over here. So that brings us to the end of the whiteboard tutorial or module. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any doubts or questions, please feel free to reach us on the email ID or website given below and we'll be happy to help you out. Once again, thank you and have a great day.